Hi guys, welcome to chapter 14. This is the unit that's all about kinetics. Um, kinetics studies the rate at which chemical reactions or chemical processes occur. Um, besides information about the speed of the reaction, kinetics also tells us how the reaction occurs. And that's what we're going to focus on throughout this entire unit. So this first video is going to be about factors that affect reaction rates and then reaction rates themselves. So as I said, in kinetics, we study the rate or the speed at which chemical processes occur, essentially how fast a chemical reaction occurs. In order for a reaction to occur, though, we have to actually look at what's called the collision theory. So particles have to collide. Generally, the more frequently they collide, um, the faster the reaction. Um, besides information about the speed of the reaction, kinetics also tells us about the reaction mechanism. And uh, we're going to focus on collision theory and reaction mechanisms a little bit later in the unit. So for reaction rates, as I said, um, a rate is a speed of a reaction. So it's defined as the change that occurs per unit of time. So when we measure how fast something occurs, or more specifically the rate, we usually express the measurement as a change in something per unit of time. So for example, we measure the speed of a car. Okay, we measure the rate uh, at which it travels. And we measure this in miles per hour. So we report it in a quantity per unit of time. Um, we report these in units that represent the change in what we're measuring divided by the change in time. And that's what we're going to focus on for reaction rates. Um, rate is always measured in molar per second. So before we look at the different types of reaction rates, we have to actually see how rates are affected. So um, we're going to look at how this rate is affected. Um, but as I said, the rate is always in molar per second. Um, you could also use the change in moles, but um, if volume is constant, which happens most of the time, then molarity and moles are directly proportional. And concentration is easier to directly measure in the lab than moles is. <clears throat> so as I said, we're going to look at the factors that affect the reaction rates. There's four factors that we're going to look at. Um, the physical state, the concentration, the temperature, and if there's a catalyst. And the collision model helps us to explain reaction rates. So as we talk about each one of these, we're going to talk about how the particles collide in order to react. Um, and that's, again, because rate depends on the frequency of the collisions between the molecules. So the first factor that affects the rate is the physical state of the reactant. So in order to react, molecules have to collide with each other. The more they collide, the faster they, rea they react. Um, so the more homogeneous the mixture, the faster the molecules can react because they're uniformly dispersed throughout the mixture. Um, a homogeneous reaction might mean everything is gases or everything is liquids or everything is solids. Um, however, heterogeneous reactions um, that involve solids are faster if the surface area is increased. So surface area kind of ties into physical state of the reactants. Think of surface area as exposure. So the more that's exposed, the more surface area. Um, so for an example, a fine powder has more surface area than a tablet. Um, and again, that's because there's more that's exposed. So with concentrations, um, as you would probably guess when we talk about collisions, when you increase the concentration, um, you're increasing the likelihood that collisions will occur. Right? Because you're increasing, typically, the number of moles in that volume. And then with temperature. Um, Temperature affects a lot of things, and rates is one of those. So reaction rate generally increases with increased temperature, and that goes back to kinetic energy. Right? Temperature is a measure of average kinetic energy. So um, as the temperature increases, the kinetic energy of the molecules increases, which increases the number of collisions and the energy, um, which makes it more likely that a reaction will occur. So think about this. Why do you keep food in the refrigerator? Well, it's so that it doesn't go bad, it doesn't spoil. That's a rate of a reaction, right? So in order to um, increase the time that, you know, you can eat it, you know, you increase the time that it can stay on the shelf, um, you do that by decreasing the temperature. It slows down the rate of reaction. And then finally, presence of a catalyst. So 
Uh, catalysts affect a reaction rate, but they are not used in the overall equation. So this is really important. Um, they are not in the overall equation. They're not used at all. They're just there to increase the rate of the reaction. Um, what happens is it lowers the activation energy. We're going to talk much more about activation energy. So it's just the energy that's needed for a reaction to occur. So a catalyst lowers that energy. Um, catalysts affect the kind of collisions, and it changes the mechanism. Um, and we'll talk more about how mechanisms play a role. Um, but a very common example of a catalyst is an enzyme. Right? An enzyme increases the rate of a reaction, but it's not used in the process. So with reaction rate, um, as I said before, rate is a change in something over a time period. So when we look at rate, uh, we're going to look at it as change in concentration over change in time. Um, so you can just kind of write it over here out. Rate equals change in concentration over change in time. Okay, so you have to have, for average rate, a change in concentration over a change in time. Delta means change in, these brackets mean molar concentration. So when you see these brackets, that just means concentration. So um, bracket might mean concentration of A or concentration of B. T represents time. Um, types of rates that we can measure is average rate, instantaneous rate, and initial rate. We're going to look at all three of those. Um, something else that you want to write down is that rates are always positive. Okay, rates are always, always positive. And they're also expressed in terms of a reactant disappearing or a product appearing. So we're going to just look at an example. So suppose A reacts to form B. Okay, so let's say we start with one molar as our concentration of A. At time zero, at t equals zero, there's one molar of A and there's no B. Right? The reaction hasn't actually started yet, so we have one molar of A, no B. Here's what our particle diagram looks like. At t equals 20 seconds, so after 20 seconds, there's 0.54 molar of A, there's 0.46 molar of B. This should make sense because as a reaction proceeds, we use up reactant and we form product. At t equals 40 seconds, there's 0.3 molar of A and there's 0.7 molar of B. So again, we've used up more A, we've made more B. We can use this information to actually find the average rate of the reaction. So using this information, we can find the average rate. So for this reaction, for A going to B, there's two ways that we can measure the rate. We can look at the rate of appearance of product B. Okay, so what we're essentially looking at is how does the concentration of B change per time? And to do that, remember rate is change in concentration over the change in time. So change in concentration, pick two points, right? Pick 20 seconds, and in this case we pick 20 and 0. You could also pick 40 and 20, or you could pick 40 and 0. But we're just going to stick with 20 and 0. To find the change in, you take final minus initial over change in time, final minus initial. So our average rate is 0 0.023 molar per second. So what this means is every one second we make 0 0.023 molar of um, compound B. Or, so that's the first way of measuring the rate. We measured it with the rate of appearance of product. A rate of appearance of product. Or we can look at rate of disappearance of reactant. So up here we looked at how B increases. Now we can look at how A decreases. So the average rate is actually going to be the negative concentration over the change in time. Now, notice the negative sign. The reason this negative sign is here is because our final is less than our initial. Remember, rates have to always be positive. So in this case, what we did is we said, all right, let's take A at 20 seconds and A at 0 seconds. Subtract it. We also find that it's 0 0.023 molar per second. This negative, though, is essential for the rate to stay positive. But notice our answer is the same thing. Whether we're looking at disappearance or appearance, the rate's the same. Except in this case, we can say that we use up 0 0.023 molar per second because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, when we focus on the appearance of the product, 
concentration increases as the reaction proceeds. So we focus on appearance of product, it's because concentration increases, so our change in concentration is positive. When we look at the reactant, okay, the negative is part of the definition because reaction rates must stay positive. So just to look at another example, we're going to follow this um, equation. Um, we have butyl chloride, C4H9Cl. Um, the rate of a reaction is measured using uh, the change in concentration over the change in time. So in this case, we look at the concentration of C4H9Cl, and it was measured at various times, right, all the way up to 10,000 seconds. Um, the average rate, just as before, is change in concentration divided by the change in time. Because we're looking at a reactant, we have to put that negative out front, remember, because reaction rates must, must always be positive. So they actually calculated these average rates for you. Notice how the rate slows down, right? The average rate actually decreases um, because we're using up more reactant. There's not as much reactant to collide. Okay, so as I said, average rate decreases because there's fewer reactant molecules. There's not as much reactant to collide when you don't have as many collisions. You don't have as fast of a rate. So this is the, this table, okay, this butyl chloride table as a graph. So what we're looking at now is we're looking at the change in rate over time. So notice that it's decreasing, right? So this is actually concentration versus time. So as time increases, we, in, or we decrease the amount of butyl chloride. So the average rate generally decreases with time. The rate at any instant is called instantaneous rate. So any instant is instantaneous rate. That means you're looking at one, one uh, point in time. So this case was the instantaneous rate at 600 seconds. Notice you're not looking at an average, you're looking at one single second. Okay. To find instantaneous rate, you have to actually take the slope of the tangent line at the curve at that point. So we'd have to get a ruler and we would have to actually take this straight line, find the slope of this line, that's the instantaneous rate. Um, instantaneous rate is different from average rate. Okay, Instantaneous rate is at a single point in time. Average rate is over a set period of time, so maybe 0 to 20 seconds or 0 to 40 seconds or 20 to 40 seconds. So average rate is over a period of time. Okay, um, so the instantaneous rate, if you notice up here, at time 0, when t equals 0, is called the initial rate. Um, the initial rate is typically what's of interest to chemists. Um, so this graph actually lets us see the initial rate and an instantaneous rate. Um, but as we looked at on the last slide, we would also be able to calculate the average rate if we wanted. So with reaction rates and stoichiometry, so for this reaction that we just looked at over the last few slides, we have this butyl chloride plus water uh, makes C4H9OH plus HCl. So reaction rate is dependent on stoichiometry. So what this means is the rate of appearance of C4H9OH, notice this is positive because it's appearing, okay, so this is positive because it's appearing, uh, it must equal the rate of disappearance of C4H9Cl. So remember, this is negative because it's disappearing. So the rate of appearance must equal the rate of disappearance. Right? Reaction rates are always equal. But if you notice in this example, um, the ratio of reactants to products is 1 to 1. So what if they are not one-to-one? -one? Well, for the reaction HI yields H2 plus I2, we can express the rate as something like this. So for every one mole of iodine that is produced, two moles of HI must decompose. So what this means is the rate of disappearance of HI is twice as fast as the appearance of iodine or hydrogen. 
So in order for the rates to be equal, if this is twice as fast, when we're looking at rate, we can actually divide it by 2, okay, because we need all these rates to equal. So if we take a look at this, remember it's negative because it's disappearing, these two are positive. We can actually generalize this equation a little bit. So if we have something that looks like this, lowercase are our coefficients, uppercase are the reactants and products, the rate can be expressed this way. So it's negative if you're looking at reactants, it's positive if you're looking at products, but then you can actually multiply it. Now in this case, the coefficients are on the bottom, but notice you could bring it out and make it a fraction as well because it's a one on the top. And this is how we can look at stoichiometry in order to actually determine the rate of appearance or the rate of disappearance. So if you still have questions, please read 14.1 and 14.2 in your book. It's only a few pages, but please make sure that you read that because this is all very new. Um, we're going to do the examples that are in your packet in class, um, but if you want to start taking a look at it, you're more than welcome. Um, if you have any questions, make sure that you ask them on the video form.